question, Prince? Yes. Uh, I already text you about. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm a Christian, but I have uh, I have a friend uh, to tell that if the can you go to the story uh, of Waraka and Waraka and Kadija? Okay. What about it? And then, uh, if uh, there is a sen there is a sentences like uh, Waraka didn't finish yet about the his writing. I understand what. Uh, so when Waraka died, yeah. When Waraka died, he has now finished yet, right? Yeah. So uh, what the source? What the source Muhammad took gospel and Torah. All right. I would answer my friend. That's all? Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah, that's all. Okay, thank, thank you. Thank you a lot. This is the hate in front of us, Sahih al-Bukhari, and we show the reference so people will not say we are making things up. Hadith number 6982. Book number 91, according to the reference. You will see here <clears throat> that the first one who introduced Muhammad to God is Waraka. The first one who said to Muhammad, you are a prophet, is Waraka. The first one who was able to understand what the angel said to Muhammad is Waraka. Waraka is the founder of Islam, not Muhammad. You will see here that when Muhammad, he went to the cave, and the angel came and he squeezed him a tree time. We go from the beginning of the story because the story is really funny and proving to us Muhammad to be a false prophet. So the prophet, he used to go to the cave and one day when he was there, the angel came to him and asked him to read. The prophets replied, I do not know how to read. The prophet added, and now the prophet is telling the story to Waraka, or to Khadija, sorry. The prophet added, the angel cut me forcefully, and he squeezed him so hard, and pressed me so hard, and I could not bear, bear it anymore, which means the guy almost died. Then he released me, and he said to me, read. I replied, I do not know how to read. Whereupon the angel cut me again, and he pressed me, squeezed me again, until I could not bear it no more. And then he released me, and he asked me to read. And I replied again, I do not know how to read. Here the story is proven to us that Muhammad from the beginning is a false prophet and Allah does not exist. Why? If Allah do not know that Muhammad do not know how to read, that means Allah is a false god. If Allah knows that Muhammad know not how to read which means he knew that this guy cannot read and he said to him read <laughs> that's mean Allah is stupid if Allah is saying to Muhammad read and he knew that Muhammad he do not know how to read the only solution for this that Allah was making a miracle like Jesus said to the blind man see so he saw otherwise what the point of saying to him see and the guy is blind Jesus when he said to the one who cannot walk carry your bed and run he said to the guy first uh, that he forgive his sin. The Jews, they were wondering like, how, how the Messiah can forgive sin, who he think he is. So the Messiah, he said to them, what is easier for you to say, for me to say, your sin is forgiven, or to say to him, carry your bed and run and walk. And the guy who cannot walk all his life, he walked. Here we notice that Allah, he said to Muhammad three times, read. I remember the read here is an order from Allah. The angel is just saying what Allah said. This is not the word of Allah. This is why this verse is exists in the Quran. Remember the Quran, the Muslims agree that everything in the Quran is Allah saying things. So the one is talking here is Allah. But the one is delivering the order <coughs> is the angel. So if Allah said to Muhammad, read three times, and the Muslims, they claim that Muhammad cannot read. And the, the story in front of us, confirm that Muhammad supposedly he cannot read what kind of God he said to a man read he cannot read trust me the true God even if he said to a donkey read the donkey will be able to read in all languages 
So from the beginning, the story is stupid. Then, three times repeating the same question, three times he's squeezing him, which is very funny. Why you are squeezing a guy? He just told you, I can't read. What's the point of the squeezing? Squeezing first time, second time, third time. To do what? What What the angel accomplished from squeezing Muhammad three times? Muhammad don't understand. The angel was not able to convince him to read, and he was not able to read. So what's the point of this? Stupid. Then the story continues. Thereupon he cut me again, third time, three times, Trinity. Islam established by the number three. Muhammad was activated by three squeezing, not by one squeezing. And here we have a question. Why Islam is stuck with the Trinity when Islam rejected Trinity? Why the angel cannot say to him, read once? Muhammad, when he interplays, he says, Assalamu alaikum three times. Muhammad, he pray, he repeat the dua three times. Muhammad, he take an oath, he repeat the oath three times. Muhammad, he says, Adam won the debate, he repeat the same word, won the debate three times. Muhammad, he want to go to the bathroom, he have to shake his penis three times. Muhammad, he want to use stones to clean his ass, he have to use three, three rocks. Muhammad, uh, he want to do ablution, he have to wash his hand three times, his face three times, his nose, blah, 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 three times, everything is three times. A woman, she is divorced from her husband. If he divorced her three times, that's final. You take an oath on Islam, you have to say it three times. I mean, what is left? The whole cult is based on three times, yet they are against, they are anti-Trinity. Then we continue here. <clears throat> After what uh, this happened, the angel, he told him, read, and he continued read in the name of your Lord, who created you, etc., and exist, blah, 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 blah. Then you will see from the beginning, he confirmed that he created you from a clot, a congealed dead blood, which is a stupid mistake. Repeated again, again in the Hadith and the Quran. And this is chapter 96, verse number 15. And here you notice the Muslim, they keep saying to us that the Quran never been changed, but the first verse was given to Muhammad today in the Quran today is a chapter 96. That's mean there's no way. Don't call me, Abu Qadir. Don't call me. Don't make me block you as before. I give you time. That's it. Chapter 96 is the first verse in the Quran. First chapter, but not today. Today, it is in chapter 96. Who is the one allowed anyone to change the location? If Allah gave it to Muhammad as first, it should stay as first. So this is a clear evidence that the Quran is not what Muhammad he have at his time, at least. Then we will find something. Don't call me Abdul Qadir. I will block you. I will block you. Remember, I blocked you before. Don't do that. Don't be a kid. The squeezing story is a stupid. Then Muhammad, he go to his wife and he said to her. And you will notice here. He returned with inspiration which means whatever he heard from the angel. His neck muscles twitching with terror till he entered upon Khadija and said, cover me, cover me. They covered him with fear was over. And then he said, oh Khadija, what's wrong with me? You will notice here that the angel of Allah, when he entered to Muhammad, he did not say to him, Assalamu Alaikum. And here we ask ourselves a very simple question. Why in this stage, Muhammad, God did not say Assalamu Alaikum? Because Assalamu Alaikum, it is something Muhammad, he started learning from the Jews when he lived between the Jews. We don't see Assalamu Alaikum. If you go to Jerusalem, you will see the Jews saying, Salam Alaikum, literally. This is a greeting of the Jews. When the angel came to Mary in the Bible, the angel said to Mary, Shalom unto you, Mary. So the story here have no Salam Alaikum because Muhammad at this stage, he is not living between the Jews. He did not learn it yet. And then, when he told his wife, what's wrong with me? 
and you will notice the description that his neck musculus is twitching. This is it's called a seizure. People who have certain kind of illness, uh, what they what they call it in English. Uh, tipsy, what they call it in English? Somebody remind me what the name? I forgot the name really. It's like you know, uh, people they have a seizure and they they fell down on the ground and their 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 muscles shrink, their neck muscles specifically shrink so hard and they get hurt and they start shaking, and they feel like you know, as as if they are dying. Epilepsy, epilepsy. Thank you. That's exactly what Muhammad is suffering from. This guy he have a mental issue. And this is based on the description of the Muslim himself and Muhammad himself. <clears throat> and you will notice here Muhammad saying to Khadija, what's wrong with me? Why an angel of God, he visit a man and he told him, I have a message from your Lord, why he is terrified and why this is happening. And look what happened. Then he told her everything that happened to him and said, I fear something may happen to me. So Muhammad here, he feel that he's going crazy. Khadija said, never, but had the glad tidings. Khadija was sure, Muhammad is not sure. Look at this. Khadija, who did not see the angel, she said to him, oh, this is good news. How? She should be worried about her husband. The guy is shaking, going crazy. And she said, no, this is good news. Okay. Then, uh, by for by Allah, Allah will never disgrace you. Here we notice that Khadija wife is swearing by Allah. Why Khadija wife swearing by Allah? The Muslim they say that Khadija was a Nasara, and Nasara, according to them, is a Christian. In order for Muhammad to marry Khadija, if she is Nasara, he have to be Nasara too. Nasara for me is nothing but a Christian cult. It is not. It's like Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not really Christian. They are cult. You know, like they believe in Jesus, etc. But in their own wrong way. So here we notice that Khadija, who is Nasara, uh, she told him. Come with me. Khadija then accompanied him to her cousin. He is not really her cousin. He is, let us say, uh, yeah, like the son of uh, not direct uncle to her. Waraq ibn Nufal, Ibn Asad, Ibn Abdul Uzza, Ibn Qusay. Waraq was the son of her paternal uncle, i.e., her father brother who during the pre-Islamic period become a Nasara, not a Christian. You see, they say here the word Christian, Nasara. The whole Quran never mentioned the word Christian. They mentioned the word Nasara. And he used to write the Arabic writing and he used to write the gospel in Arabic. That is the Quran. And by the way, here we have many problems based on this hadith. If Waraka was writing the gospel in Arabic, that means there was a gospel which is non Arabic, and there's a gospel which in Arabic. You know what I mean? So, where is the gospel which was not Arabic, and where is the gospel which is Arabic now? How the Muslim they say that. The Christians or the Nasara they corrupted their book, and Waraq ibn Nufal is the decent man who made Muhammad a prophet. And by the way, Muhammad he claimed that Waraq will be in heaven. So at least at this point, Muhammad he have a book which is the book of it's called the Bible, which is not corrupt. He have two copy of it. He have one in the language which is translating from. And most likely it's Aramaic, and he have the copy which is the gospel in Arabic. Now, for me, and this is my own opinion, if you read my book, 
I have reference proving that Waraka must be the real father of Muhammad. This is why anytime anything happened to Muhammad, Muhammad, you find him with Waraka. So to make it simple, when Waraka die, read with me carefully. It says here. After a few days, Waraka died, and the divine inspiration has also paused for a while. Why Waraka died? Uh, Allah stopped sending messages. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Who is Waraka? So Muhammad becomes so sad, and we have heard that he intended several times to throw himself from the top of the high mountains. <clears throat> so Muhammad, because of this, there's two things happen, which is destroying his life. Waraka died. And now there's no Quran. Obviously, Muhammad, he get his Quran from Waraka. And obviously, Muhammad here was suffering badly because what he would say to the people, I need Quran. The guy who gave me Quran is gone. And every time he went to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down, Jibreel would appear before him and say, Oh, Muhammad, you are indeed Allah Messenger. In truth, whereupon his heart would become quiet and he would calm down and return home. And whenever the period of the coming of the inspiration used to become long, he would do the same, which means he tried to commit suicide. And here we have to question the stability of the brain of Muhammad. Why each time the inspiration stop or pause, the guy try to commit suicide? You must be crazy. Why? So what? I'm a prophet of God. I should be wise. God, he sent his message when he wish, as he wish. So why if he stop messages, I'm going to go to the top of the mountain and kill myself? And why the, the angel, he have to repeat the same story. He come to him, he says, you are a prophet, man. Believe me, you are a prophet. Don't do that. That's mean Muhammad he himself, he don't believe he's a prophet. <laughs> you know what I mean? In order to do such a thing, that's mean I have to be suffering from mental illness. The angel came to me first time and he said to me, don't do that, you're a prophet. So he confirmed it to me, that's it. Okay, so why I do it again and again and again? It's like a child. Each time he needs some candies, he go to the top of the mountain. He said to mommy, if you don't give me candies, I'm going to throw myself. How this guy can be a prophet of God? So all the story of Muhammad is nothing but a fiction. And obviously Muhammad is suffering from mental illness. Actually, all stories all over the Quran and the Hadith proving that Muhammad is crazy. In the Quran, Muhammad was accused to be crazy six times, as I remember. <laughs>
the Messiah on the cross and he made someone look like him and this is exactly what the Quran is saying so um, so uh, Muhammad took from the Nasara yes he, he, he uh, Muhammad he never met Christians Muhammad he have Nasara around him only Wow. there's no there's no Christian around him he have Nasara that's why the whole Quran never mentioned anything except Nasara there's there's the people of the book in Islam is two Nasara and Jews so Nasara is the is the the, the one he think they are the true Christians and yeah. the Jews they, uh, he called them Yahud which is a wrong name mm. right. and then so, uh, and then there is very uh, like, like after that let us say there is like a, a Anything have to do with God and prophets, Muhammad is obviously is copying from others. But there is there is a chapter in the Quran is written by Muhammad. This is why they sound very stupid. You see, when uh, 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 if you buy my book, you know any of my books, and you learn, you know, you, you read my translation or let's say that my writing in English, and then you buy Shakespeare, you will notice right away the difference, right, and how strong the language in Shakespeare book. And there is no way to compare my English to Shakespeare, correct? Yeah. So, if you are an Arab person, right away you will notice that the one who wrote the Quran, there's some chapters they have a good Arabic, and there's a chapters that have a very horrible Arabic. It cannot be by the same writer. It's obvious. Mm -hmm. So, I believe that those who they have a good Arabic is what Waraka he wrote, and the one who have a wrong language is what Muhammad he made. And those are usually the one is speaking about any woman she want to give her private part to Muhammad to sleep with him. Uh, Muhammad have fight with his wife. They are silly. They are stupid. So the Quran yeah. is divided to uh, what is written by someone who have a good Arabic and someone who have very silly. He have a flight of thoughts. He have suffering from mental illness. He is stupid in the in organizing the ideas. Uh, uh, his language is bad his Arabic is bad and uh, you know we have tons of stories as an example if you know uh, story, you know the story where, where Muhammad is said the, the, uh, 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 Allah is the best of the creators you remember the story yeah okay the story yeah, is I, the guy there is a guy he is a, he's an inscribed he's a Christian he was working for Muhammad and uh, uh, some they say he is he is not a Christian. He is the cousin of uh, Uthman. Anyway, so uh, uh, the guy he uh, he was uh, he was writing for Muhammad Quran. Muhammad was telling him Quran, and then the guy he said, "Subhanallah, khairul You know, Allah is the best of the creators. Muhammad he said, "Write it there." Yeah. You know, to the barak Allah khairul So. The guy, he said, but this is what I said. He said, yes, yes. Uh, it came to me the same. <laughs> but he just said that, you know, Muhammad, he liked it. Yeah. He told him, added there. He liked it. So the guy here, he decided to leave Islam. And this is, this is what the Muslim says in their books. He went and he said to himself, well, if Muhammad is a prophet, I am a prophet too, because I am the one who said that first. So how does we become yeah. became Quran? So he, he discovered that he's a scam. So he ran away and he escaped and then he wanted to kill him and etc and you know he he hide in the in the house of Uthman long story so obviously Muhammad he made Quran by his own and he uh, he take from people a sentence as you, as you remember uh, uh, Omar he said my God agree with me in three some stories they say Allah agree with the Omar in ten some they say seven whatever it is you will notice that Muhammad he uh, Omar he says something uh muhammad he say he take it and he put it as it is in the quran so we cannot say yeah. the quran is made only from waraqa but we yeah. can say the major information is coming from waraqa and then after after that muhammad he have no choice but to make his own quran and he start collecting ideas from people around him but um, for example the kaaba to pray to the kaaba who is the one who came with this verse omar uh, uh the the hijab the chapter of the hijab who is the one who said that omar uh you know so like many things uh, 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 uh the, the verses about uh, 
uh, Allah threatened the wives of Muhammad to behave otherwise he will be divorce them and replace them by different women this is from Omar so Omar he says something Muhammad he take it and he put it in the Quran and this is the same for anything there's tons like a story of Alexander the Great this is not from Muhammad yeah. this is uh, you know allegiance written by a guy uh, uh, from Syria and he, he made a, a book it's called the book of the two horn and that he called he called Alexander the Great by by the person of the two horn that's why the Quran mentioned the man of the two horn now if you know if you ask yourself how Muhammad he claimed that God is speaking and then he called a guy the guy with the two horn do we know his name who is this guy the that guy with two horn since when we call a person by a horn yeah. you know what I mean the reason yeah, yeah. for that Muhammad is copying a legion a copying a story fiction story and in the story it called him the man with the two horn so in chapter 18 verse number 83 it says and they are asking you about the Quran, the man with the two horn say I will tell you a story and then he starts in the story which is very stupid the story that the guy who went and he found the Sun sitting in the murky water blah 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 here this Quran the story is from the guy from Syria who wrote this story about a real person who is Alexander the Great like now today many many people write stories about someone is real mm -hmm. but but the story itself is fiction full of fiction so uh, uh muhammad he took the story but he uh, he wrote it again in his own way in the quran so this is the the, the chapter in front of us this is muhammad talking yeah this is not waraka uh so i have one uh question um about the uh, azar so uh when quran um uh, mentioned about the gospel and torah okay. he mentioned about the false uh false story you know so it's like there is no abraham there uh it's like uh just being abraham and ibrahim so uh where the muhammad took that as i said ev everything muhammad he have is taken from from uh, from people around him and uh, for for sure the story about abraham have two sources here have the nasara because they believe in abraham and the jews same as Moses, mm -hmm. same as mary same as uh, isa you know and here you know this is why and this is why we see the the name is isa is coming because he took it obviously from the book of the Nasara, but he could not read it. If you remember in the Quran, the Quran did not call the the, the gospel uh, by a Hebrew name. He used the Injil, and the Injil is a Greek word. Right now, here we need to ask yeah. ourselves why Muhammad he said that Allah he sent down the Injil. The Muslim they say to us that uh, uh you know uh, jesus was sent only to the jews okay how he is sent yeah. to the jews but yet allah he is using a greek name allah is using a wrong name no you know what i mean the the injury is a correct name actually but this is a greek name so how allah he used the greek name yeah i understand what this, is, this is this is this is uh, this is against the teaching of islam because if jesus is a, is a prophet was sent to the jews imagine you know mm -hmm. i am a prophet to the jews and the name of my book in japanese it doesn't make sense. <laughs> you know what i mean, well, I mean yeah, yeah. why is that he, you know this, this book is for the jews not for the greek so yeah he's copying the greek because this is the only name he knew he did not learn something else you know so he have to put mm -hmm. the word as he he have it in the translation from waraka you know what i mean mm. so yeah, yeah the translation the translation from the from waraka he use it it says injil and the same as azar in the book of waraka it says azar so muhammad do not know what azar he put it there azar and actually me myself i believe muhammad he knew how to write how to read yeah i know about that what the story when he said uh, uh in Arabic, he said, Ma he was saying, What I should read. 
which is very normal but the muslims they are stubborn they say they do not know how to read why because the quran says that muhammad was illiterate but the quran doesn't say muhammad is illiterate about writing or reading but uh, about the book about yeah about not having a god the true god you know you, mm. if you don't have a true god then you are illiterate uh, uh, you know even the quran says that i mean muslims are really very naive uh, uh, so, Christopher, uh, about the illiterate, what, uh, what chapter? What is what? About the illiterate. Yeah, people, illiterate, uh, illiterate. About the... If you go to chapter 2, verse number 78, as an example, you will see the Quran telling us exactly what is the illiterate. And among them is illiterate folk who know not, who know the scriptures not, except heresy. Okay? So, as, yeah. as they think. So who is the literate is the one who do not know the book. Anyone who don't have a book is illiterate. That's and right. the Christian and the Jews are not the you see the, uh, 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 the Quran did not say nowhere that the Christians is illiterate. Always is called people of the book. If you read this chapter example, chapter three, verse number twenty, you will see it says the following. If they argue with you, Muhammad, say have surrendered my purpose to Allah. So have those who follow me and those who have received the scriptures and those who read not. Do you see it? Yeah. This is in Arabic not. is illiterate. Read not is our so those who receive the scriptures and those who read not. Read not what? Scriptures. So the Quran, you know, divide the people to two kinds of people. The one who is illiterate and the one illiterate about God don't have a book and the one who have a book and this is what the verse in front of us saying clearly but yeah. when you speak to the Muslims they are stubborn it says in the front of us <laughs> it says they are those who they have a book and those who they are unlearned mm -hmm. and this is coming from the Jewish style of teaching the Jewish believe some we know we know that the Jews we believe in something or they say Gentile right yeah. This is exactly what illiter and, uh, illiterate mean and learn. So there's those who knows God and those the ignorant who do not know God. As simple as that. It's not about writing and reading. Yeah. All right. Anything else? My so it, it's like the same story with um, uh, if the Muhammad cannot read and then cannot write. Uh, when Muhammad died, uh, he just told um, his friends to taking uh, material writings right right, right. no no they, uh, obviously muhammad he know how to write how to read this is but uh, i mean uh, as i said when i debate with muslims i debate him with what they believe in not what i believe in i believe muhammad knows how to write but as long they decide uh, to be stubborn and to say no okay go with you that will make it even easier for us to get him busted yeah all right well, thank you very much, my friend, for calling. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.